hi everybody. Welcome to our webinar today. This is Jill Hurston, uh, the marketing department. With that being said, I'd like to introduce Hemet Elhens. He is Synergy's co-founder and CEO. He will be our moderator today. Hemet, over to you. Thank you, Jill. Well, greetings everyone. Welcome to our monthly webinar series. Today's session is a fascinating and stimulating topic of design system for enterprise portfolio UX. Um, I hope all of you are staying healthy and attending to your mental and physical health and people around you in these tough times. So we are just delighted to bring in this bit of a distraction, a stimulating one at that of our design system. This is a hot topic and the idea is um, how to help companies which have complex and enterprise software portfolio of products, how to improve the consistency and usability of each of those software products um, while also improving the efficiency of the development teams. And this topic of design system is an answer to that. And it's been around for just a couple of years, become popular topic. So it's very timely for us to share this. And I have a, a, a very qualified panel to run this through with you. And we'll do this in a format of a uh, panel discussion with people who actually have worked on design system in a real world environment and uh, I'll let them introduce themselves in a minute. And the way the structure will work is we'll go through, um, after the introductions, we'll go through uh, the design system overview and how it got applied in a real implementation situation. And then we'll take some questions along the way. You, uh, those of you who are regular participants in our webinars, you know that. And then we'll still reserve some time towards the end to take more broader questions right at the end in last 10, 15 minutes or so but you're welcome to keep sending your questions along the way in the Q&A panel. And I, as a moderator, will, will, will filter those questions and bring up those questions which make sense to bring along the way and then hold off on those that are better answered towards the end. So with that, let me introduce uh, uh, our client person, design manager, Tara first, and then she will help others introduce. So over to you, Tara. All right. Well, good afternoon. Um, I'm Tara Long. I'm the software design manager of pharmacy solutions for Change Healthcare. Um, you may notice that my email is different from Change Healthcare, and that is because um, I work for a company called PDX Inc., um, and we were acquired by Change Healthcare in June. Um, so most of the experiences and what you'll hear from today um, actually originated while we were PDX Inc., um, and now we've kind of come under that Change Healthcare um, umbrella. But um, I have been working with CenterZip. We've been a, a partner at least more than nine years because uh, when I started at PDX Inc. nine years ago in design, we already had um, teams uh, with CenterZip. Um, so as far as that relationship, we've it's definitely a well-established partnership for the last nine years or more. Um, and in the design realm, um, I guess I'll say we had a need kind of come up three years ago or so. Uh, most of our applications are kind of monolithic applications. They're on older technology. Um, they're very functional based. Our our um, niche, like I had kind of mentioned, was is pharmacy software. So we have an enterprise suite of solutions for um, geared towards pharmacy is very centric there. Um, and they need to be functional, they need to be efficient, uh, they don't necessarily need to be flashy. Um, so they are on older technology, um, but because of advances in technology, uh, one of them being just monitor screen sizes expanding, um, we did see a need for to bring our applications up um, to newer technologies, lighter platforms, ready for cloud, um, and that's why we approached our um, partners, CenterZip, to, to elicit some help with the UX design and the user experience. Um, and so that's kind of where we'll start our journey here. I'll hand it over to Nadia to introduce herself. Thanks, Tara. Uh, hi, I'm Anadnya. Uh, I'm Senior Product Designer uh, with CenterZip. Uh, me and Hashita, uh, we're working on design system. 
from uh, for PDX and change healthcare. Over to you, Harshita. Thanks, Anudna. Hi there, I'm Harshita. I am the lead product designer at Synergip. And today we'd be walking you all through our journey of crafting a design system for PDX slash change healthcare. Let's get started with a small math problem over here. Let us say there is a project which has come up, which is an MVP. The, the brief is to create an application for inventory management tool. And uh, the, the initial brief is to release an, a configuration feature, which is approximately four pages. The duration, which is expected, is one sprint, uh, which would be approximately two weeks for this particular situation. And we've defined the user as the administrator. <clears throat> so for, for a brief like that, an average team size is six people, uh, which comprises of one designer, three developers, one test or QA engineer, and one product manager. When they start to get to work, the product manager would majorly focus on a successful sprint delivery. They would be gathering the stakeholder requirements. The designer would uh, collaborate with the product manager to gather the stakeholder requirement and to debrief the requirements to follow their entire design process, which would lead them to their final end, pro final end product, which would be the visual design. Once they have the visual design in place, they would be, so this would be an iterative process of taking the feedback or iterating on the concept or the solution which was provided. <clears throat> Once the visual design is good to go, it is handed over to the developers who, in, who implement the provided design using the, the tech stack which is being used for the product. And then the test and the QA engineer would write test cases according to the acceptance criteria and would retest the issues, whatever, if anything crops up. In the entire process, there would be times that the team is working on smaller nitty gritties of the front end application and not having much time to spend on the actual functional requirements. The time and the effort invested in, in the example that we have posted is there would be six people who would be spending an approximately 480 hours over a period of two weeks. And for an MVP, if it takes 12 sprints to accomplish the requirement or to, or to accomplish the delivery, uh, they're investing in, in all of six months. Now imagine if you could do the same amount of work in at least three sprints lesser. How would we do that? To do that, it is so it, it's easier because they would be able to focus more on functionality and would not have to worry about the consistency or or about having to collaborate about the front end uh, elements, smaller elements. So what we are claiming over here is that if without a design system, the user or a particular product was taking 12 sprints to be delivered, with, with a design system in place, you can do that in nine sprints. How? Because the product the product can be worked upon much more efficiently. The, the team can scale uh, on the functionality. There would be a better product delivery and also there would be consistency all across. So Harshita, let's um, amplify this point. This is a very important point you're making here for the audience that there is a significant efficiency improvement with a design system instead of 12 sprints, it's going to take a nine sprint in this example of a typical application which would have otherwise taken 12 sprints without a design system. So I'd love to hear, uh, Tara, as you've been doing this with our team and across products, how does this sit with what you have experienced in your portfolio products at PDX? Um, so we have a recent example. We actually were building a um, new application this past uh, four months, actually. Um, and we got a request from the business owner to have the UI done a, about three months faster than it was originally slated. Um, and because we already had the design system pretty well established, um, we were still finishing up some of the component library, but it was usable. Uh, we were able to to basically just plug Harshad and Anadya in with that team, come up with the designs using the established guidelines, the, the design language, right? And then the team could just plug in those components that were already in the library. Um, so I would say, you know, it might have even happened faster for us than what we're showing on the graph just because um, 
this application was brand new starting we were building and we were able to use the library that was already there so we've been able to meet those um, expedited timelines to deliver UI um, and so this now that we've got an established system I'd say this is is really expedited what we can put out great thank you I mean this is a good hard evidence um, of a 25% or so kind of improvement in efficiency while also of course like you guys mentioned improvement in the consistency and the usability of the UX system, which is also very valuable so back to you um, yeah yeah okay so now we have we have put forward the benefits that that would come across with a design system. Let's take a sneak peek at the design system. Take a look at a short video to know more. Excellent. Well, thank you. This was a good, quick way to provide an overview of what a design system is. Let's take one question that I think someone is asking here, um, which is, how is this design system that we just covered in this video actually different from a component library and templatized style sheets? Anathan, do you want to take that? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, design system basically is a combination of components uh, not the individual components and having uh, different foundations and uh, uh, the elements which uh, we'll be uh, looking forward in our uh, webinar 
uh, in next stages. Uh, so uh, that is customizable and also the development part is uh, different from that. And uh, it is particularly designed for as per the requirement of our enterprise product. So we'll be revealing that as well uh, in uh, next few minutes. Oscar, so we'll go more. Maybe this is also time to take a poll uh, uh, for our first poll to see what where audience is at. Yeah. So what exactly is a design system? Jill, maybe you can read out the poll just to make sure everybody can. Sure. Sure, we started a poll. So what is a design system? We're just kind of seeing what everybody's knowledge is. It's either a pattern library, a style guide that helps the developers to design, a collection of reusable components guided by clear standards, or, heck, I don't know, that's why I'm attending this webinar. And I can see people are voting. Let's just give them a couple seconds. Yeah. And, and then have our results okay you already do good good so yeah i'll hold on other questions all right so 93 percent people look like collection of reusable components guided by clear standards and i'll let anutnaya tara and harshita build upon that as you go through discussing further so back to you so it looks like most of our audience are already aware of a design system <laughs> yes so yeah. you have to add to the tougher components now. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's continue with what a design system would bring to your plate if or to your product plate. It would bring in consistency because let's say there is a product which is long standing, and uh, over a period of time, there are multiple designers and developers who are working on your product. Uh, there are situations when the same elements or the same form fields are being used on multiple pages and there are chances that it gets copy paste from one page to another be it for design or for development booths in the process of copy pasting there could be a scene of missing out a particular parameter or maybe just one of the colors of the hex code gets updated to something else which is not done unknowingly or over a period of times, so if the project has been going on for longer than six months and there is a new trend in place, like uh, trends keep changing from gradient to flat design, etc., there are new components or new uh, new new style guides which keep getting introduced to the product. Because of which, the uh, the look and feel of your product uh, gets very varied over a period of time. And if you have a design system in place, there is an off the shelf library which is available for your usage. Uh, you can avoid having multiple uh, multiple looking form elements on your uh, on your application or on your product. Next, it would enable you uh, for efficiency because the process of doing design to deployment, the loop of from design to deployment is only achieved once in in the in the in the process of building a design system but otherwise in in the process of building a product or uh, this loop is uh, this loop gets run for more of functional requirement or more for focusing on the user experience of a product so uh, not having to talk about the uh, the color of the button which was there or not having to talk about the border radius of a form field could be a good refresher for both the developers or the designers and the entire team member. It would, it would enable you to scale your product uh, more efficiently because as I already mentioned, the developer and the designer would not go about talking about the nitty gritties of the, of the front end development process or the design process. They would be actually collaborating on making the UX of the application better. They would be, they would be concentrating more on the functional requirements. So what we're trying to put, put up over here is that investing in a design system will actually reduce your product delivery time. How would they do that? Because if, if, there is, if there is consistency and if you have an off-the-shelf library available for yourself, it is easier to pull a particular component and uh, pull all of them, gather them together in a single, uh, in, in a single layout. And it, it, it enables your delivery time it fast it enables faster delivery time there is lower technical debt because uh, the copy pasting process is stopped there is one single uh, source of truth which is available for the usage and because the 
because the because your end users of the design system which is the designers and the developers both are using your library there would be a lot less time which is spent on the cleaning of the code or cleaning of the design files and of course this this would all of this collaborated together improves the product quality uh, there is consistency across all your screens and all all uh, all your elements on the screen are going to look alike and behave alike and that's pretty that's critical to your end user um as far as their quality of using the application um, we had we have several applications that different users in the pharmacy would access. Um, so along with the main filling system, they might go into the inventory management, they might go into the store base mail ordering, um, and you know, the logout option is in a different area of the screen or you know this is a, a click link where they're used to seeing a button for the action um, and just them having to basically train on each of those interfaces with the components it's and and not just the components but the outline the framework you know we've we've got the logout here on all of our applications um, or the menu is always going to be vertical we're not doing horizontal just to have that um, already in muscle memory for the user really improves their their use of the application um, but then as the reducing the product delivery is huge for our development staff right we want to get things out quicker faster um, and that also goes to our customers um, satisfaction they want the functional changes faster quicker and we can do that if we're not having to continuously um, this button's not the right shape it should look like this one it's you know this font's not the right uh, font why does it look different on this message than that message so um, this is well worth the time uh, as far as what we've seen. Right. So let me ask one question. The consistency, Tara, that you talked about that brings about uh, the buttons and the menu layout and all that, is it sometimes a challenge that, that you're trying to cater to a certain persona for one product and you want that to be specific user interface or user experience for that persona and that too much consistency may make it too generic is there a challenge you find um i don't think we've run across that and another example that i'm just thinking of outside of our products is um even just the microsoft you know when you when you go to 365 you know where to go and then when the apps load they have the similar file you know edit view kind of functions um and so no i don't think we've run into a thing where the consistency has just really um hindered functional you know like we've not been able to meet the function yeah thank you yeah yeah back to you Hirsta. yeah so i do have a point to add over there for consistency uh so having your form elements look similar to each other will not make a difference to the application because the applications in a product portfolio would be of multiple domains so there would be an inventory management application there would be a point of sale there would be a warehouse management application all of them and the end users are also different for all of these so just having a button which looks same across all your all your product portfolio is is not going to make a difference to the to the persona that we are talking about. So you can still tailor the UX for each persona while maintaining. Yes. The okay. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a quick poll here. So why is it important to create a di design system rather than buying one off the shelf? A couple of the responses could be maintenance is easy. You can create components as per requirements. They're compatible with your legacy backend code or all of the above. So while this poll is going on, let me ask, is this even feasible that you could, that a company 
and you guys star at pdx maybe you considered can buy it some sort of a design system and then customize it for your product portfolio or is it just um, not a practical way to go about it yeah so it totally depends on the requirement and uh, till how much customization is required from the product perspective and yeah. from the business perspective so uh, of course it is depends on the needs of the uh, solution which is required to be there so but do Anything? companies use that approach uh, to your knowledge uh, either of you that you know they would take a system and then customize or just that's, that's not a practical way to go about it so there are uh, so it totally depends on the scope of the project that we are talking about and also the the kind of back end uh, specifications we are looking for so it, it is totally normal for somebody to go and find an open source design system and start using it but also there is no one size fits all uh, situation over here so according to what customizations we are looking for what kind of a ma uh, what kind of a technical or uh, technology tech stack are we looking to match and also if if it is a legacy product which has a tightly coupled backend already in place and we're looking to uh we're looking to migrate it to cloud it uh it makes a difference in uh so so the, the business decision changes according to the uh, the parameters which you're looking at that makes sense sounds good and as the poll sounds like indicates accurately here our audience is very knowledgeable that's for all of these above reasons makes sense to create your own okay yeah uh so so the customer that we created a, a design system for is pdx who's now a subsidy of change healthcare uh they are a healthcare technology company uh, headquartered in nashville uh so they have a legacy application in place they have a big product portfolio which is in place uh, which is a secure product portfolio and they're looking to migrate to web uh, embracing the next gen user interfaces and uh, considering all the requirements that we have considering the tech stack that we that they already have the kind of back end which is uh, which is in place since so many years and which is being used by the end users right now across all the applications uh, we we could not uh, we could not rely on one particular design system and uh, it was easier for us to create one uh, uh, from scratch because we knew the requirements. We we started by doing an audit of the product portfolio, and it was easier for us to come up with something which matches all their requirements rather than taking things, uh, taking multiple things from multiple design systems and then pulling them into pulling them together into a single one. So let's take one question which came a few minutes ago, Harshita, to this point. So did you guys yeah. end up? spending time upfront to design the to come up with a design system and whatever duration it took you know months and weeks and all that before you started using it or can you talk a little bit about or did you follow some form of an agile approach where you did a mvp version of the design system and start using it to build other products and, and along the way started enhancing the design system itself as you went along can you talk about the upfront investment in building a design system essentially uh, so, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so i will say that we definitely started designing um specifically for our pharmacy filling system we um had a request from a customer to add a piece of function and we thought this would be great if it was web a web app um and we wanted to move that way with the entire application anyways so we started on that piece and um we probably we didn't do upfront i'll say we didn't do an upfront library we didn't do an upfront design system we were kind of by committee making decisions about what we wanted it to look like um we did do some rework we did start establishing kind of our concepts. Um, and then once we kind of finished with that project, we went to another application that we were just building and we established even more concepts and guidelines. Um, and I think it was really during that, that we 
decided we needed to have a system, a component library that was reusable across products um, because we had you know, at least 10 applications that we're going to do this web kind of refresh on. Um, and so we kind of said, OK, we need a reusable component library. We need guidelines. We need a design system. Um, and then we kind of shifted focus to kind of do that in parallel of still uh, designing for the application so we could keep development going. Um, and so that's why when we say this has taken us a year, it's really because we have um, split the focus and had to uh, keep developing our products and also set this library up. So no, we didn't do upfront. We definitely have been doing agile <laughs> with that's this. Yeah. Would you recommend that as an approach to our uh, audience here that if they needed a design system, which you said is you build it incrementally as you went along applying it and using it in real products and did it in you know, a agile fashion, is that a recommended approach for building design systems? Um, I would, and I say that because there were things that came up in the in each application that weren't present in the other ones. Um, you know, in one system we didn't need tables and grids as nearly as much as we did in another that was very data heavy. Um, so in each one we've experienced a need for something else that has just built onto our library. I think it would have been very daunting to say, we need to come up with a system in a library that would encompass everything we need for all of these products. Um, I think that would have been quite an undertaking and, and quite an investment upfront. Um, we, you know, we experienced some frustrations doing it. Uh, you know, putting the cart before the horse type thing, um, just because we needed to make decisions and there were faster timelines. Uh, but ultimately, even the rework has been minimal compared to, I think, what would have been that initial upfront, let's get the whole thing built and then hope we did a good job. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, back to your stuff. Okay. So I think we've talked enough about the business effects and the benefits of a design system. And let's get to the basics of understanding what is a design system now. So a design system comprises of five of these uh, elements. First is a design language. So design language is basically setting up a foundation for your design system. It is, uh, it is understanding the product a portfolio, the kind of users who are going to be using your design system or the end users who are going to be embracing your uh, designs at the end. Uh, according to that, uh, coming up with a color strategy or typography, uh, ty uh, access, uh, wondering if you require accessibility or not, writing styles, etc. Uh, then is then the next essential part is a design kit. So design kit is basically the design uh, of the components and the anatomy of the of that design. Of the of the designed components, also mentioning the behavior, the do's and don'ts, how and where and when these does these components can be used and what combinations would would it be used in. Next is a component library. So component library is basically the developed version of the design kit that we have in place. Of in our case with with the design system that we created for Nova for the component library we had separate exportables because we had a very a wide range of products that we had to cater to, and all of them were not uh, using the same or similar tech stack, because of which we had to split our exportables into the CSS, uh, into an exportable CSS library and into a, a fully functional working component library. Then is a developer sandbox, which is basically the environment for the end users or testing and development and, and uh, environment. And uh, then is the documentation for both design and development of uh, how tos, when tos, what would be the specifications, and what layouts it would be used, etc. Uh, next, we'd move on to the design process. So this design process is uh, is a mix of both design and development. 
uh, we of we of course started with research of both uh, for both design and development. So for design, we had a product audit which we had done first initially to understand the variety of components and the variety of layouts uh, which would be required to be incorporated. For development, the research was more about the kind of framework which would be used, which would uh, which would be compatible with any tech, uh, any technology background or backend of uh, any uh, any backend it would be compatible with. Next, we went to identify the components which we wanted to be a part of our design system. What behaviors and what features we wanted those components to have. Uh, then was our design and development phase. So initially we uh, we started with only designing and uh, getting a review of that done. Only once the design was reviewed and tested with the with the stakeholders, we got into development of those, uh, which is an iterative process again. So the entire process is a, is a very collaborative process between designers, developers, uh, test engineers, and of course the stakeholders. Uh, so once you start working on a design system, the following checklist would be a good to have checklist. So laying the foundation uh, to uh, identify the framework, the color, the typography, I've talked about it enough. Understanding whether we want to, uh, we want the product to uh, to be uh, to be WCAG, AAA conformance uh, levels compliant. If we, if we are designing for accessibility, understand that and then accordingly decide your colors and typography and uh, et cetera. Uh, design language, component list, understanding the patterns and trends, and then design and development collaboration. So this design and development collaboration is a is a major checklist. I will say over here checkpoint over here because uh, the design and develop the designers and developers have a, a different terminology. They they need to come up with a common ground of terminology. A very uh, small example I can give is for designers, uh, pixels is the is the unit of designing but for responsive design it gets converted to rem uh, so these kind of smaller collaborations go a long way when we are working on a design system and also make it even more scalable and flexible uh, some popular design systems which we have out there are material by google atlassian has their own design system polaris uh, has uh, Shopify, by shopify there is carbon design system. There is also a famous Airbnb design system. So uh, all of these giants are already have already embraced the idea of a design system and are building upon it. So, so well, let's skip, and we had a poll here, but in the interest of time, let's just skip it and keep moving. Yeah. I agree to that. Yeah. So over to you, Anup. Thanks, Ashita. So, uh, so far we have talked about the uh, design system and uh, the business part of it, uh, but uh, this is what we have done uh, in our uh, design system. Uh, we call it NOVA design system. And uh, till today we have released 36 components uh, and 20 incremental releases. Uh, the duration we uh, were working on uh, working for is uh, 12 months with a team size of uh, four uh, two designers and two developers and uh, this this uh, nova design system uh, is uh, adopted by three products so far and uh, we are working towards implementing those uh, for a few more products uh, yeah, so let's moving to check on this so tara as you as anudnya just mentioned has been adopted by three yeah. Uh, products so far. Any challenges you saw along the way as new teams adopt in a, a, what is now an existing design system? Any adoption challenges by new product teams? Um, Archiba, you might add, or Anudia. Um, I'm thinking of our most recent product that adopted. Um, I can't think of any real challenges they had other than there were things that um, they needed added to the component library, which we had to get done. Um, uh, other than that, <laughs> I That's mean, good, yeah. it's good to know yeah, that, you know, that this hasn't been a challenge of as you scale and, and expand that option across the portfolio products. Yeah, sounds good. 
happy to know that we have covered uh, in the research to avoid the <laughs> challenges, right, Tara? Yeah, I'd say yeah. this one definitely was a very smooth process. The first, um, you know, the first one we hadn't established the library at all, so we were kind of building as we went, and then the second one um, wasn't still we were building and built, you know, as we were going. Um, and uh, really this last one is the one that has the library was ready and so they were able to quickly adopt it yeah so uh reference to uh refer to tara's uh points uh these are the three parts where we have uh designed and uh, created our design system uh, from design perspective it is foundation component list and documentation and from development perspective uh, we have uh, kept it versatile uh, for uh, ui theme library and exported to component library and uh, developer storybook as well uh, so considering the design part uh, the foundation which is the base of our design system uh, for us uh, it was accessibility color grid interaction typography and iconography i'll walk you all through a uh, few examples of it uh, just to get a glimpse of uh, what we have done uh, so uh, this is a uh, sample colors and uh, we define for our uh, nova design system so this while design, uh, defining these colors uh, we consider mostly a brand colors which are which uh, the pdx street healthcare uh, is using so far throughout all the product portfolios and we came up with a particular hex course because uh, we face these challenges while collaborating uh, between designers and developers where uh, there are changes of uh, hex codes like here and there for error messages and for uh, tool tips so uh, this uh, was uh, pretty much helpful while uh, once uh, we defined uh, colors for it. We also defined the usage pattern for same, like uh, what should go uh, for typography, what should be for status color, uh, what should be for background and outline. So gradient were also defined uh, for same. Uh, these colors are also defined based on the uh, accessibility uh, WCAG guidelines. Uh, considering uh, our products uh, mostly supports uh, and uh, focused on uh, continuing with uh, and uh, maintaining these guidelines. Uh, so yes, this that was also covered in the same. Um, moving to the typography, uh, this again uh, is one of the area where developers and designers feel challenging uh, when designer uh, design designer design something with particular font and that is not getting reflected in the development. Basically, the problem is between the pixels and uh, the properties of the uh, typography. So uh, we defined uh, the font and also the typography elements in different different uh, properties, which is uh, from pixel to REM to weight and what should be the line height of each and every font heading till uh, copyright as well. Uh, this is again the usage pattern, like I mentioned before, uh, that for uh, each foundation element, we have defined uh, the design as well as the uh, usage pattern of how it should go with which color and uh, what should be the uh, weight of the font and uh, line height of the font for which background. So that was also defined over here. <laughs> yeah, so uh, next was the component list. Like uh, it was part of uh, post the research, we defined the component list, uh, how the product line is and what all common components are used throughout all the uh, our uh, product portfolio and uh, what will be a repetitive component uh, which will be used for uh, all the products. So this was overall the component list of or the building blocks we may say for our, uh, our products. For each component, uh, we defined a skeleton. So this makes it uh, different. And this is the standardization of a design system where we define each uh, design, anatomy, usage pattern, and code for every uh, component in a design system. Like taking for an example of a button, uh, what all types of buttons are used uh, in a design uh, in each design or every product which is primary secondary and tertiary so uh, considering our product language uh, we defined uh, with the background and without a background how it will look 
uh, how should be the hover state of it and uh, what how should be the secondary button look uh, moving to the uh, next part uh, which is the anatomy of it uh, as i mentioned in our uh, in my earlier uh, uh, say that in the skeleton that uh, how we define the anatomy of it like if there is a spacing defined for typography as well as the button and the difference between both the buttons, then it is easy for developers to implement on uh, the product as well. And it saves time if the properties are already different. Uh, next is the storybook uh, screen uh, where we all our components are uploaded and uh, developers can drag and drop from here. Uh, they can just easily check uh, whether if it is written primary and I change the label of the button uh, to some more adding some more extra characters, how it will look. Uh, it, it shows upfront and it is easy for developers to visualize uh, in the product as well. Uh, so Tara, you must uh, also have an experience like while we were designing for buttons uh, as well as we were designing for uh, the time uh, input field or the date picker uh, so uh, do you want to share uh, that experience uh, like uh, considering the enterprise product or uh, the time which is a uh, format which is used so we we get creative or more creative about how it should look but the functionality of it is very very important in that case so uh, I, I, you, you remember that part where uh, there was a debate on the button design and uh, time picker. Yeah, um, we've had so the way we kind of went about what we were going to choose. Um, we had weekly meetings with a group of folks on the PDX side um, who would you know, give input, give feedback. I like this, I don't like that. So typically um, we'd get like a few options and we'd say, okay, what about this? What about that? Um, and then we were making decisions. So yeah, each week for about an hour, we had quite a um, an opinion <laughs> session as to what to pick. Um, and it's, it's just kind of you don't think about the things but the you know the calendar date picker was a great one it's like well for our users we need it to be you know we're much more looking at date a day as opposed to the year view um, or even the time it was like well we're not really doing 24 hour and yes we would like a.m. and p.m. to be an option there as well um, so yeah we had quite a bit dis of discussion before we you know decided on what path we would go and I think you know even some of that it was like well they're doing this in this app already and we we're like now nah, we're gonna do this going forward so um, yeah, that was uh, that was a fun experience. <laughs> it was more of a uh, from a point of view where uh, how the actual user is going to use it and uh, the type of user and the background and how they're used to the current system and how we are changing it from here to whether we are going on a web or how we should make them comfortable using it. So, yeah. Uh, uh, from there, uh, we will talk about the portfolio transformation and we would like to hear from Tara, but uh, before that, can we have a quick poll? Yeah, yeah. So here, why would you invest in a design system? Every product of my company looks different. It's challenging to find time to enhance product experience. We spend a lot of time doing the same things on development or don't want to compromise on product quality for quick work. Right. So while we the poll results, uh, so we just have 10 more minutes. Uh, so I'd love to hear Tara what you uh, would share next, and then um, we will speed, try to leave a few minutes for general questions. So the answer here looks like from the poll is kind of split, huh? Why do you design it in the design system? Zero percent believe because every product my company looks different. That's not a reason. That's interesting. Uh, Fifty-three percent said. They, we spend a lot of time doing the same things on development. So that's absolutely true. We gain a lot of efficiency, uh, we heard today from design system. 
and 26 percent we don't want to compromise product quality for quick delivery so you're right that makes sense and 21 percent okay great over to you tara yeah okay um thank you <laughs> yeah thank you for my little prompts here um so i will talk a bit quicker um i think we touched on the points of accelerated delivery time um so this latest product was a great example we um started officially on that project january and um we were not expecting to create the user interface until um starting in june um we actually have a bulk of the user interface already done um we're just now adding on some more screens so we um we're originally not even going to start until june we were told in march that we needed to go ahead and start it and we were able to get that up and out uh, by june um, now we're just adding on to it so by having an and with if we didn't have the library um that would have been much more challenging we did have the team build a screen the home page without plugging into the library um and we or had already hit challenges where we were going to need to rework and change up things um so that's really why we said let's plug this in now um, I have them use it and there we were able to build um, the end-to-end -end kind of flow for this product. Um, so using this library, having guidelines established, um, there is that work of, of meeting and discussing things, you know, deciding on the date picker, deciding on toggles, deciding on toasters. Um, but once that's in place, then your your guidelines are set up and your delivery time is accelerated. Um, reducing technical debt, again, it's not um, having to create these components in each app, having different developers. Um, for one of our products, we have 10 teams um, with at least three developers on each team. So we've got over 30 hands in the pot um, writing code. And when it gets to the front end, we've just been able to reduce a lot of rework, a lot of um, miswork where the font is different than it should be. It's not bold, it's italicized, um, all of that. Um, we kind of reduce on the front end piece for the technical debt. Um, quality goes hand in hand with that. We've got these established guidelines and components. So our user experience um, now is defined and when we go and put out a release, we're not spending time and time on the on the UI again. We can use these things that are already established. Um, and then with team collaborations, um, that library really is our glue. You know, if the component's not there, then we have discussions to get the component added. If the component's there, they're ready to rock and roll, right? They can just go with it. Um, so all of these are have helped us kind of move forward in getting our legacy app into the web even more we are doing that in a phased approach so we're not just doing a whole revamp at once we are building screens and adding function um, into the web as we can um, for the users to to kind of start getting the experience in the web and still have the functions that they need um, so this has all of these have kind of really been benefits of the design system for us um and i'll quickly touch on some challenges <laughs> um business wise there is the investment um we partnered with center zip we we needed additional skill set in this area um, there is the time there and the investment um to do the design system now like i said we 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 did it in parallel of other development efforts so that we could still keep putting out what our customers needed um while also making this technology change making things lighter and thinner you know for us down the line um, but there always is that what's my return on investment as a business 
our customers weren't necessarily screaming for a flashy front end, um, but it puts us in a good place to be cloud ready to you know be able to deliver faster releases, put things out um, quicker. So the investment has to be weighed, return on investment. Um, then there's the user experience. Um, we're going from a thick based client, Java Swing app, and we're putting it in the web. So most, most people are familiar with the web. Uh, they at least go to checking, you know, they're checking their banking account sites and uh, email sites. But when you change them from an application they're using for their day-to-day -day functions for work and then saying this is going to be a revamp and we're put you, putting you in web, uh, people tend to really kind of want to shy away from that change. So we've had to kind of mold in those changes. Like I said, with our pharmacy app, we're doing a little bit here and there. So they're becoming more and more accustomed to web until we finally can get the entire app there. Um, for development efforts, delivery. So there is that, um, you know, we were, were building the cart right along with running with the horse on delivering and developing products. So we've had some rework where we've said from now on, we want the components to be this. And, and those were just some things that we had to be prepared to accept. Um, overall, the agile methods kind of worked for us. So those are kind of the business challenges. And then the operations, no challenges. Um, these are the decisions. I mean, this is what I'm really going to call the decisions. What is What are the frameworks look like? What should the theme be? Um, what browsers are you going to support? On our older applications, we were our Internet Explorer, which is kind of like a bad word now. Um, <laughs> So we had to make some changes um, and talk with our customers as far as what are we going to support um, with going web. We could now be on tablets and where are we going to be able to do Safari. Um, so we these were a lot of decisions that needed to be made, a lot of collaboration with different groups in the organization. Um, and, and of course, you know, collaboration is great, but it brings its own challenges because you need people's time um, and their energy. And so those were just some of the, the other challenges along with, you know, everyone's opinions <laughs> are also there. So, yeah. So those were, um, it's definitely a benefit. It's definitely something that has, um, improved our you know delivery our quality um and then those were some things that we just had to work through yeah so uh this is the outcome of a design system we have jotted in six points uh from the accessibility perspective to how it is easy for sales and marketing and how uh, the development can be reused and scaled uh, after placing the design system also, the collaboration and knowledge sharing is uh, the important part, which is improved uh, in the organization. So uh, moving to uh, the principle, uh, which is a drive principle used in uh, development. Uh, considering the concept of a drive principle, we uh, may say that design system enables uh, the drive principle. Excellent. So uh, over to you, Herman. Yeah, so let's pause here. We had... Um... A little bit more time we thought we would have for questions we, we don't so let me just do a quick wrap up here i really appreciate yeah. all of you bringing this hands-on real world experience of building a design system and actually applying it in the portfolio of software products which is i think a real benefit for m many of our audience who are on the in the call in the webinar today so we can help companies do that and i wouldn't do a commercial here but um, we have a number of other questions, but in the interest of time, respecting how much time we said we would take for this, let's pause here. And we're happy to cover any questions offline. Any of you guys have questions on how to get started with design system? What are the de deliverables? What are the challenges? We are more than happy to do that in a, at a separate session with you guys, each, any of you, okay? So with that, Jill, you can wrap up. I think we'll have this document available to people who registered or uh, registered and attended the webinar and thank you especially 
Tara for joining us from Fort Worth and from Anudnaya and Harshita middle of the night from Pune. All right. Yes, thank you everyone. And again, I'll send out the recording tomorrow. Thanks. Guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Good day guys. Bye-bye.